Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Craig Young, and I am the conductor of the Mississippi College Symphonic Winds. And we are so glad that you're here to join us in our fall 2020 concert. As you know, the last eight months have been very trying for our country and our world. And it has been no different on campus at Mississippi College. And we are so fortunate to be able to be here tonight in person to share all of this wonderful music with you. In order to correctly social distance and keep our, our faculty and our students safe, we've decided this semester that we're going to divide our ensemble into two, one being the woodwind ensemble, the other being brass and percussion. So this is what you're going to hear tonight. You're going to hear pieces by the woodwinds and the brass and percussion, and some we will combine a couple times, but overall we'll keep those separate. Now one of the challenges has been that there is not a whole lot of repertoire written for either of these ensembles, especially for the woodwinds. So we'll be hearing a lot of transcriptions tonight. But that does not diminish the wonderfulness of this music. And we're going to begin with a wonderful overture by Mozart called Il Re Pastore. This is one of his lesser known operas, but it is a wonderful, driving, exciting, beautiful overture, and it is arranged by Nilo Hoagie, and we know that you're going to enjoy Mozart's Il Re Pastore.
The next piece that you're going to hear is Jack Stamp's Declamation on a Hymn Tune, performed by the Brass Ensemble and the Percussion Ensemble. If you've followed Mississippi College Symphonic Winds over the years, you'll have heard several pieces by Jack Stamp, including his driving Auburn fanfare and his fun take on the baseball hymn, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, called Pastime. His declamation on a hymn tune is based on a hymn tune that you will surely know. And it is a beautiful and driving piece for brass and percussion. You know you're going to enjoy Jack Stamp's Declamation on a Hymn Tune.
Our next piece that we're going to perform for you is Gordon Jacobs' March from his original suite. Now, Gordon Jacob was a very well-known English composer who had over 700 works published in many different media, many of them for concert band. He was a student of the famed Rafe Vaughan Williams, one of the great composers of English history, and taught at the Royal College of Music for 42 years. The original, in the title of the original suite, is actually put on there by the, the publishers in order to delineate it from all of the transcriptions that were so common when this piece was written in 1928. Gordon Jacob tried to get it changed, thinking that it sounded quite pompous in saying original, but he never was successful. We're going to be doing the first of the movements of four from this suite, the march. And this is not a march in the normal John Philip Sousa kind of um, form but has four different themes to it, most of them driving and exciting, but one very gorgeous and lyrical. So we are excited to present Gordon Jacobs' March from his original suite.
present the second of two pieces that are not transcriptions on this concert, and that is Corel Husa's Divertimento for Brass Choir and Percussion. Now, when I was thinking about splitting the ensembles for this semester, this is one of the first works that came to mind, is this is a major repertoire piece of brass choir literature by a famous composer. Corel Husa was a well-known Czech composer who originally composed these pieces for a piano duet for his two daughters who were growing up in the United States as he was teaching at Cornell University. He wanted them to know something of their Czech heritage. And so he wrote the piano pieces, which he then made into brass choir pieces, four movements of this. The first one being overture, very short and big. The second one being scherzo, very short and quick. The third one being the song, a beautiful little Czech melody played by uh, muted brass. You'll notice that they'll be taking off their masks, their instrument masks, and putting on mutes. And then we'll be taking them back off and putting the masks back on for the fourth movement, which is one of the most challenging pieces of the brass choir repertoire called Slavic Dance. We're confident you're going to enjoy the Slavic rhythms and dances of Karel Husa's Divertimento for Brass and Percussion.
next piece that the Woodward Ensemble is going to perform for you is by the famed French composer Maurice Ravel. He composed his Pavan Por Una Infante Defunte, pardon my French if I said that wrong, for piano in 1899. It became so popular that he then transcribed it for orchestra in 1910, and it has since become a core repertoire piece for orchestras throughout the world. Even though Ravel was French, he loved Spanish sensibilities and customs, as evidenced by his most famous piece, Bolero. The piece was written for his patron, who was an American citizen who had moved to France to marry a French aristocrat, hence the princess. And even though the title translates into Pavan for a dead princess, Ravel was not thinking about a certain princess who died, but really about the aristocracy passing away and he was thinking about what kind of a Pavan a princess from a hundred years ago would have danced to. So we hope you enjoy this beautiful and moving Pavan for a Dead Princess by Maurice Ravel.
The next pieces that the brass and percussion are going to perform for you are two movements from Sergei Prokofiev's Lieutenant Keisha Suite. This became one of uh, Prokofiev's most famous works and is performed by orchestras all over the world. It was written to accompany a film in 1934 in Soviet Union, which became one of the first sound films ever done in that region. Now, it's a funny story about Lieutenant Keisha, so I thought I'd just read you the story real quick. In the Russian Imperial Palace, a sleeping czar, Paul I, is awoken when a dalliance between two courtiers ends with a shriek. Enraged, the czar demands that his officials produce the culprit or face banishment for life. The officials remember that a clerk slip of the pen while compiling a military duty roster some time ago resulted in the inclusion in the list of a fictional officer named Lieutenant Keisha. Figuring that the czar could not hurt someone who doesn't exist, they blame Keisha for the nocturnal disturbance. The czar orders the imaginary lieutenant flogged and sent to Siberia. However, when the courtier confesses to the disturbance, the czar pardons Keisha and reinstates him in the imperial court with a promotion to the rank of colonel. In fear of the czar, the courtiers are forced to extend their creation's phantom career. Thus, he supposedly marries a princess, after which the czar grants him lands and money and promotes him to general and commander of the army. Eventually, when the czar demands Keisha's immediate presence, the officials announce that, Lu that General Keisha has unfortunately died. A lavish funeral is held with full military honors. The stingy czar demands the return of Keisha's fortune, but is told that Keisha has spent the money on high living when, in fact, they have stolen it for themselves. The czar denounces Keisha as a thief and posthumously promotes him from general to private. We now present two movements from this five-movement work, and the two movements we will do will be the wedding of Keisha and then Troika, which translates as sleigh ride.
the Woodwind Ensemble will be performing two pieces that really have nothing to do with each other other than they were both arranged by David Marlott. So we'll call this the David Marlott Suite. The first of these two pieces is a fun and famous tango by Gerardo Matos Rodriguez entitled La Comparsita. The second of them will be a piece by Canadian composer Donald Coakley entitled Celebration. This is a driving work that he wrote in 1998 and became so popular that he then uh, transcribed it for other mediums. For the second piece, the, the celebration, the Woodwind Choir will be joined by multi-percussionist Brandon Pratt. So we hope you enjoy the David Marlott Suite.
Before we announce the next piece, I would just like to take a moment here to thank the people who have been involved in bringing this concert to you on live stream today. First of all, one of our faculty members at the music department who has been in giving of his time so freely, we'd like to thank Mr. Tyler Kemp. And also, handling much of the camera work and helping us out with all of our video details has been Mr. Anthony Thaxton. We really appreciate his time. Also working our cameras for us today is Anthony's wife, Amy, as well as Fumi Hall. So we thank them for coming and helping us out. Next on the program is wonderful music by the famous John Williams that he wrote for the exciting Harry Potter films, arranged by Robert W. Smith. Now I've been very excited about doing this piece for several years. But the problem has always been that so much of the piece is either just woodwinds or just brass. And in a regular rehearsal, you have to think about how are you going to make the woodwinds sit there while the brass rehearse and vice versa. So this has become the exact environment to do this piece for. I'm very excited about it. We will be performing four different themes from this movie. First one being Hedwig's theme. The second one being the famed quick Nimbus 2000 by the woodwinds. Then we'll do the alma mater of, of Hogwarts called Hogwarts Forever. And then we'll end with the brass doing the exciting Quidditch theme. So here we have the music by John Williams of Harry Potter.
Before we finish our concert this evening, I would like to acknowledge five of our graduating seniors. All of these five have been integral parts of the Mississippi College bands throughout their entire time here at Mississippi College, and they will all be missed so much. So I would like to thank all five of them, including flutist Hallie Gwynn, flutist Molly Gwynn, trumpeter Andrew Brown, trombonist Jonathan Johnson, and trombonist Josh Waldbeezer. All of them have made wonderful contributions to our ensembles throughout the years, and we want to thank them and wish them luck in their future endeavors, whatever they may be. We also want to thank all of you for joining us this evening for this wonderful concert, whether it was you who are here in the auditorium with us or you on live stream. We really appreciate you coming and helping us celebrate great live music because it's really important. And in these days of pandemic, we are so in need of such wonderful things in our lives. And I'm really glad that you came and joined us today. And I hope that you are glad you joined us as well. When I arrived 22 years ago at Mississippi College, the composition professor's name was Dr. James Slaughter, who is a well-known composer throughout the South. And I went to him and I said, Dr. Slaughter, what is something that you've always wanted to compose for the bands? And he said, I've always wanted to do a really fun version of When the Saints Go Marching In. And so starting in 1999, we performed his Singing Saints every football game and before the fourth quarter. And for the past few years, we've been performing them at the end of our fall concert. So today we're going to finish our concert with this tradition of Singing Saints by Dr. James Slaughter. Have a wonderful evening. 